Um, however you're joining us today, you are very, very welcome, whether you're joining us live on Zoom now or whether you're uh, joining us uh, on the recording of this service um, later on today, on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. The Lord be with you and also with you. Today we are thinking about uh, the passage from uh, the Gospel of John, John 15, where Jesus says to his disciples, I am the vine, you, you are the branches. And uh, how we are unified together in Jesus and in each other. How uh, the branches are part of the vine. And so we're going to be uh, thinking about that this morning and I'm going to be explaining what this is all about and also this rather curious uh, fruit hedgehog. Uh, so uh, plenty to think about. Praise God for the Lord our God the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory. Alleluia Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so our first hymn this morning is In Christ Alone.
So as we have gathered and sung of being in Christ and of Christ, we come before Christ with all those things that we carry with us, and particularly those things of which we are not proud, whether they're things that we have done, things that have been done to us, or things that we have seen being done. So we're going to use a Kyrie confession, and you simply repeat uh, the last line of each part. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us our sins and restore in us his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So a collect for this, the fifth Sunday uh, of Easter, which I'm taking uh, from um, a book uh, of Lindisfarne liturgy called Radiance of His Glory. God of love, may we abide in your presence and so abide in your love. As we freely receive your love, let us freely share with others all that you have given to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit for ever and ever. Amen. So as I said at the beginning of this service, the reading we're focusing on today is from John 15, and it's verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's a really powerful imagery having the vine and the branches and you can just imagine Jesus and the disciples walking through the desert through the Judean countryside and seeing these plants cropping up as they still do today if you go to that part of the world be it uh, natural grapevines or fig trees or whatever it is. But it's a powerful uh, analogy of our love in God and of God in us. That Jesus is our life source. That we are the branches that grow from that source. That he is our very core. And that God is tending and holding all of that together. That actually, if we choose to try and be a branch on our own, we've got nothing to root into. We will surely wither and die. But also, Jesus is fully invested in us. Because actually, if we are not growing to our full potential, if we're not being fruitful in that spirit, then Jesus himself suffers too. Because what use is that core, that being, if there is nothing to grow from it? And so we come to think about what it is to be a part of that vine, that bush, that tree, that unity with Jesus. And it is the very fruits of the Spirit. And St Paul writes about those extensively, and in particular in Galatians, 
where he says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So a couple of hours this ago this morning, uh, the children here had uh, a little Sunday school in our kitchen and um, we, uh, they made this uh, collected vine to uh, be a visual uh, representation of John 15. And so they collected up these branches, these sticks, actually from St John's churchyard yesterday afternoon, and they've put them together to make a representation of the vine. And then they have blown up uh, different coloured balloons, uh, just partially blown up, um, so they're a bit more resilient than a fully blown balloon, and uh, they have drawn on there, on one side, a face, which represents each one of us, and uh, on the other side they have written uh, one of the fruits of the Spirit. So we've got all of them here, joy and gentleness and peace and goodness and strawberry. <laughs> and kindness and love, self-control, patience, I can see over there, love again there, and faithfulness down there. So they're all represented in different colours, in different shapes, all hanging together from the same vine. And that is the imagery that Jesus is giving us, that we are unified in our diversity, in our differences, in other gifts that we have, but we are nevertheless all together in one vine with Jesus at our very centre. And what a powerful uh, story that is, that actually we are brought together in that fruitfulness in whatever it is. And brought together in that fruitfulness was the second part of their activity this morning, and uh, you might want to give this a go at home, indeed you might want to try and give, give this a go at home, bringing together something which represents uh, the vine and the branches. But here we have got uh, an apple which has been cut in half and uh, we've got some cocktail sticks sticking out of it and all over the cocktail sticks we have got blueberries and grapes and even some raisins I can see there too. And so it's a bit like a Christingle I guess, but it represents us coming together uh, in Christ and that we are the fruits that come uh, from that love that Jesus brings to us and that fruit is the love that we bring back to Jesus and so there is something that is very visual and uh, very edible and I look forward to uh, having that at the end of this um, service so perhaps you might want to give that a go at home too as something to uh, just represent that love that fruitfulness where we come together in Jesus. So I'm going to go to a screen share now where you will see the uh, key words uh, from the reading that you heard from John 15 uh, in the form of a word cloud which is loosely in the shape of a tree and you're going to hear a uh, meditation that uh, Reverend Michelle wrote a few years ago now uh, which is entitled Abide in Me. So you'll hear that and then you will hear the hymn Abide in Me. Uh, I'm not actually asking you to join in with that hymn, but you just listen to it, listen to the words as you hear them, uh, and uh, just spend the next five minutes just meditating on what it is to abide in Jesus and for him to abide in us. Abide in me. Abide in me. Just rest for some time, for you are the branches and I am the vine. I have so much to share with you, more than you can know. I want to care for you, to give to you, to watch as you grow. I have so much to teach you, so much for you to learn. But you must be the one to create that space for which you yearn. For I am in that stillness. As you listen, search and stay. 
I not only hear your words, but am in them when you find the courage to pray. Abide in me. Just rest for some time, for you are the branches and I am the vine. It is only when you choose to rest and abide in me that I can really come to you and in your life just be. I can become part of who you are when I abide in you, changing and shaping your being through my love so true, engraving in you my image, my child all will know that we are deeply connected and I will never let you go. Abide in me, just rest for some time, for you are the branches and I am the vine. For when we dwell together, much fruit you will bear, fruit that will deeply enrich you, fruit I ask you to share. I come to the feast laid before you, we invite you to come and eat. My Father's joy is in you, and in me your joy is complete. We call you to ourselves, in our love and presence to be. As I seek the space to abide in you, please come and abide in me.
Let us pray. The response to, Lord, as you abide in us, is may we abide in you. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Father of all, we pray for your church, that it may be caring, loving and accepting. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Father, we come with sorrow for all of those who have been denied freedom or peace. We pray for communities that have been destroyed, where families are divided, for children who are alone. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Father, we give thanks for all people who are able to exercise their talents their gifts, their fruits of the Spirit. Where people are able, are free to think and act without hindrance. We pray for all of our families and our friends, the communities of which we are part of, the communities surrounding us. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Lord of life and love, we praise you for all who have borne fruit in your service, for all who afforded your kingdom, for all who have shared their love and goodness, and we pray for all of those whom we love and see no longer. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. So we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we understand that challenge, that call to abide in Jesus, as Jesus abides in us, incumbent upon that is a covenant, a promise to do so. And so uh, we're going to sing our final hymn now, which is, O oh Jesus, I Have Promised.
So we've come towards the end of our service now this morning, um, but I want to leave you with a challenge, a challenge indeed that I invite you uh, to engage with over the coming weeks uh, up to Ascension and then Pentecost. And we have called it uh, Our Three Words. And uh, we're uh, inspired really about, by the initiative uh, What Three Words, which you may have seen advertised on television uh, or the internet. It's, uh, it's a growing thing whereby the entire world has been uh, divided into little three metre squares and uh, each one has been identified by using three entirely different words. Um, and uh, it's used increasingly by things like emergency services, etc., in order to be able to pinpoint more accurately uh, places uh, beyond sort of postcodes and things like that. And I thought that's quite interesting because actually to understand where you're going, uh, you kind of need to know where you are. And so I wondered whether uh, we could use something similar to just pray through where God might be with us right now, individually, and as churches. And so I'm inviting people uh, during this Easter season to think about what those three words spiritually might be to you um, uh, in three different ways. One, a word uh, relating to our church lives, uh, one relating to the world, and one relating to our communities and asking God to speak to us, to give us a word in re relation to those things. And then we'll gather those together as we uh, move between Ascension and Pentecost, that great 10 days where we often focus on the Kingdom of God. And so uh, this morning, uh, our children here had a go at that, and they came up with uh, three words. Where, where they feel that God uh, would like us to listen more to. And so in relation to church, uh, they wrote down lively and to have more fun. And in relation to the world, um, the environment, to listen more to the environment, that God wants us to listen more to the environment. And in terms of our community, to have more activities and to enjoy activities. Uh, things like the scarecrow competition we, might have, we had in St John's a uh, year before last, church fates, that kind of thing. So I invite you to do the same, to really spend some time in prayer, listening to where God might be speaking to you in terms of your church life, your community, and the world around you. You will find uh, more details about that uh, uh, um, on the website. Um, I also emailed it out last night uh, and there are hard copies in the churches that have gone out today. Uh, so do have a look at that and do engage with that. Pray with that and be with that. So we're going to have a blessing now. All about abiding in the love of God. Abide in the power of the Almighty. Abide in the love of the Saviour. Abide in the fellowship of the Spirit, that you may bear much fruit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you all and remain with you always. Amen.